Is the mean girls trope real or is it an over exaggeration? Furthermore, are men to blame for this? Short answer, I'm sure that the vast majority of you men and women have probably been a victim of Regina George. Female bullying is something we often don't talk about in society or focus on. It's something that flies under the radar or it's something that we turn a blind eye from. But the reality is it does happen and the question is why does it happen? How does it happen? And who does the bullying? about bullying our thoughts go to that big kid on the playground who's very physically aggressive and shoves little kids into trash cans yet female aggression often displays itself as something that's far more understated and calculated according to howstuffworks.com female bullies often engage in relational aggression using tactics like spreading rumors leaking secrets and social exclusion to harm others emotionally rather than physical aggression more commonly associated with male bullies. Both male and female bullies may seek to gain social status through their actions, but female bullies who often possess a high level of empathy use the understanding of social dynamics to inflict maximum emotional damage on their victims. Let's look at those attributes for a minute. Exclusion. I'm sure most of you have been a victim of this kind of behavior. And while it's okay to surround ourselves with people whom we actually want to be around, exclusion in these terms looks like deliberate exclusion to hurt the other person. Gossiping and rumors. Have you ever had anyone make something up about you behind your back and spread it like wildfire. This is often done to ruin the victim's reputation. Female bullies will often use passive aggressive tactics to victimize their victims. This may look like emotional manipulation, humiliation, or backhanded compliments. We often see these behaviors play out in a schooling or work environment, especially where there is an evident social hierarchy. When you think about work, for example, you have your managers. At school, you have the popular kids. So they present certain roles of power where these women can walk into and become bullies. Since I'm a working adult woman, I can certainly come from the angle of female workplace bullying. I predominantly work in a male dominated industry within trades landscaping. Women of course are free to choose the trades if they so want to. However, most of them wind up choosing more office or reception roles. I work both on site and in the office and I get to see the two different dynamics between the men and the women, which is very interesting on an anecdotal observation. Well, of course, men do have their issues working in amongst one another. What I have noticed is that the social dynamics in the office where there are predominantly women is quite staggering. I've seen firsthand women in a superior role actually become incredibly manipulative of the people who are deemed under them. For example, management coming in and turning everyone on each other. In this case, it looks like reading the social situations, being able to read the individuals whom you wish to manipulate, earning the trust of these individuals, and then turning these individuals against other individuals in the workplace. So what is it about these social dynamics with a clear hierarchy that invite these women to become bullies essentially? According to Forbes, it's because women want to keep up with their male counterparts. Women who rise to the top often take on more aggressive leadership style in order to fit in and survive. They leverage less of their emotional intelligence and more masculine traits because they believe being too friendly makes them appear weak and incompetent. There is a pressure on women to act more aggressive and ruthless so they can keep up with their male counterparts. Otherwise, they think they'll be taken advantage of or not taken seriously if they show more feminine qualities. I inherently disagree with that stance. If it were true that women are trying to keep up with men in the workplace and therefore they used masculine or bullying tactics against other women, then we wouldn't see female aggression develop on the playground. For decades, researchers thought that boys were inherently more aggressive than girls, and playground scuffles usually ended with a boy in detention. In the 1990s though, Finnish researcher, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that, <laughs> began interviewing adolescent girls about their interactions. What he found is that girls are no less aggressive than boys. They are just aggressive in different ways. 
Instead of fighting on the playground like the boys, they play subtle mind games that may be even more damaging than a black eye. Researchers at Brigham Young University have shown that girls as young as four have learned how to manipulate their peers to exclude kids and become the queen of the sandbox. They'll tell lies and secrets to get other kids to shun the offender. That means that before kindergarten, girls have started practicing relational aggression. As a woman myself and a mother of a daughter, I absolutely see this exact thing play out and it has played out in my own life. The run-ins my daughter has with her female peers is so contrasting to what my son goes through with his relationships. For my daughter Scarlett, it's often my best friend decided to play with this other girl who I don't really like today. They ignored me for the whole day and started laughing. That's not to say that boys don't go through similar relational problems, but in the case of my son Oscar, and I'm not exactly proud to say this, but there has been a few throwing fists in his life. Why is it that in society we don't talk often enough about this passive aggression, this relational aggression. I think part of it is that it flies under the radar. It's not so overt and in your face. What I mean by that is it takes a little bit of working out the situation to understand, wait a second, that's bullying that's happening. I also think that there is a bit of a cultural stereotype when it comes to women. I especially see this on social media where women are more so seen as the gender who can't really do any wrong. This is where I take issue with sayings such as, you need to be a girl's girl. It's like, no, I'm not gonna be a girl's girl if that woman is behaving in a way that I disagree with. I'm simply a person's person if I agree and value said behavior that is playing out in front of me. We women are not a monolith. Some of us are assholes. And it doesn't automatically mean because it's a man's fault or because it's internalized misogyny. Some women are just dicks. The reason it flies under the radar so hard though is because women tend to be more nurturing and empathetic than men. But as the saying goes, with power comes great responsibility. Women can use these tactics to manipulate others because they do have an understanding of social dynamics and relationships. Men on the contrary, yes, they can use their physical aggression to hurt another. However, they can also use that physical ability to help others, to protect others, and to get things done. I personally don't like to be likened to this notion of Women can't really do any wrong, and if we do do wrong, it's because of this internalized misogyny. I believe the opposite to be true, that we as women have complete accountability and responsibility over ourselves. If someone else is doing, if we choose to be an asshole to someone, or if we choose to bully someone, that's all on us. What are some of your experiences in the workplace, for example, or in your social life, where you have felt like you have been a victim of female bullying. The worst case for me would have been in the workplace several years ago, about nine years ago, where I was alone with a superior. She was a very two-faced woman and would often present herself as somebody completely different to what I would experience behind closed doors with her. She'd often tell me things like, my husband doesn't love me or that his family doesn't care about me. She would insult my parents and say they're weird and brought me up wrong. She'd give me new responsibilities to then turn around, yell at me and tell me that I'm doing it wrong. In fact, everything I would do would be wrong. She would micromanage absolutely everything. This type of behavior went on for about six months and it affected my health to the point where I wound up with really bad insomnia. Also to the point where I developed confidence issues, social anxiety and self-esteem problems. And no, there was no male superior that she was trying to impress or to keep up with. It was literally just her and I working alone together. I'd love to hear your stories and how you overcame them. So if you want to leave a comment below, feel free to do so. As for now, we will see you all again for the next video.